Okay, this is Drake. It is now the August business meeting of the Ohio Mises Caucus, and we have Angela McCardle, the future chair of the Libertarian National Convention here with us to answer all our questions, solve all our problems, give, I don't know, what, $10 million to the Ohio LP? Is that the number? Uh, I'm doing it all. I'll, <laughs> I'll, um, I'll use OnlyFans to raise money since that is now going to become a G-rated platform. Really? Perfect. I hope I hear they only take Bit uh, Dogecoin now. Yeah. But well, really, they're take, Yeah, they're removing their adult content, so that's okay. that's in the news today. Really? That's. Oh, there, there's a whole interesting conversation there that we're gonna skip and leave for the. We'll we'll That'll put it on the part the we're not recording. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I just said that'll be in the post, Joe. Yeah. Um, so, so Angela, uh, want to talk a bit today about kind of uh, what you did in California, because you guys seem to be doing fairly well um, yes. and getting a bit of advice. So first, I'll kind of start off with where Ohio is so far. Um, Ohio is really weird. We were up until... 2020, a very anti-Mises caucus state to the point that the last couple organizers that were in Ohio entirely burnt out and gave up. And in 2020, I met Michael Heiss at the uh, national convention and we started over. And I had a couple other organizers with me and they're all gone now. <laughs> then I had a couple other organizers and they're gone. Now we have more organizers like Caleb. And Caleb's great and he won't leave me, please. Um, but then in the early 2021, there was a couple of big scandals within the Ohio LP, totally unrelated to the Mises Caucus. Um, and the establishment group that had been very anti-Mises Caucus that actually tried to violate the state bylaws to get us out of the national delegation, all kinds of shady stuff, they got kicked out by this group that I have dubbed the uh, Fuck Your Drama, We Want Liberty Caucus. They are not very affiliated either way, but they are happy to work with anyone and really don't like the people that just play social games. And they have kicked out everyone who just plays social games, which was coincidentally everyone who was anti-Mises Caucus. So we're now great buddies at the Ohio Party. We, uh, we've been sending them some of our volunteers to work at the state level. Um, we have now five of the uh, what 25 central committee spots we're, we're one of the biggest groups starting up the state affiliates um, and they are happy to talk with us and partner with us and I have just been asked to step in for the vice chair of the Ohio party who is uh, stepping down because of his new job so we have not been there hasn't been a conference there hasn't been a convention but we've been slowly seeping in um, through a half accidental takeover of just showing up and being competent and then they want us to do things, which is great. <laughs> and uh, the comment is always like, if this is the Mises caucus, I want more of this. Like we have volunteers now. <laughs> um, so, and then the other weird thing that'll be coming up this upcoming year is the way that Ohio works for national uh, convention uh, delegates is it's a system based off of seniority within the party um, as determined by position and then how early you apply. So like if you are the chair of the state party or anything, the executive committee, you get first dibs and then like county level and then uh, currently incumbent in office libertarians and so on down the line. And then within those tiers, whoever applies first. And traditionally, Ohio has managed to fill all of our seats um, and have a few al alternates. This time, I expect to have even more people filling seats and alternates. On the other hand, um, a lot of uh, people in the Mises Caucus have been taking um, positions, especially at the county level, because there's been a big shakeup, which is complicated, which means there's a bunch of open county seats. Um, because mm -hmm. the county parties are reforming from scratch. You don't want to know the nonsense behind that. But don't worry about it. Um, but my, and then the thing with this is Ohio has 46 seats, one of the big uh, delegations. But because of that system, it's never going to be an all one way, all the other state. And last time 
I think the numbers were roughly 31, 32 Prags, uh, eight Mises Caucus, eight uh, Vermin Supreme Enthusiasts. And this time, if I had to ballpark it now, I think that we can pretty confidently send. We're guaranteed at least like 13 Mises caucus spots, probably shooting for like 25. Um, hopefully more than that, but the, we're going to get at least a majority of it. We are, we are not going to be able to get all of them. That is very impossible because we would have to remove every single person at in the 40 something state level positions from every other group. And Got then also it. a lot of them are good people and I okay. want to work with them. So you'll get the plurality of Ohio. You might even get a majority of Ohio, but you will not get all of Ohio. And okay. that's where we stand. When is your convention and is your are your is your XCOM elected by a central committee? Yes. Okay. So it's our, not just everyone. Yes. So our conference is um this weekend. And at the conference, it's just fundraising, no business. And then our next convention will be, has not been scheduled yet, but will be after the national convention next year. Got it. The, the, yeah, the, our convention has nothing to do with our delegate selection process. Right, right. Yep. And nothing to do with how we actually select any officers. Interesting. Okay. It's similar to New York, but even different from that. New York is the only other one I know of that's kind of got a similar situation. Yeah. The big thing is going to be at, in the month leading up to primaries, we are going to select all of the central committee seats. Um, if you have a central committee seat, you are second from the top on the priority list. You are guaranteed a spot at convention. We current, they had 32, there are 32 seats that exist. There'll be 30 next year because they're mm -hmm. based off congressional districts. Mm -hmm. um, there were, I want to say 13 seats open um, just because they're based off regions in Ohio. So there's just right. no one had to up to fill them. Um, and then I only have re not, I should have learned it sooner, but I didn't, that if you just show up to a meeting, you can actually fill one of those seats. Okay. And they can be elected into it. So that's how we got five people on the central committee without even going through the election process. Um, okay. When we actually get to the election process, I am planning to take at least all the empty seats and maybe try to bump a couple and planning on trying to bump a couple of the other ones, which would be the majority of where our uh, gu guaranteed spots for the national delegation are coming from. Then obviously anyone in central commit executive committee uh, gets a seat. Um, and then anyone that's kind of a, a high state level, of, a county level office, so essentially the county chairs are going to be pretty much guaranteed a seat because I think that previously maybe 15, 20 of the seats are taken by the things above the county level. So if you have a uh, county chair position, which a number of us now do or are going for, you're gonna get your seat unless something really weird happens okay so how can i help you guys recruit um what can i do to help you get more delegates you tell me okay. how i can best help you because your state is different than mine yes um the biggest thing is organizing people into their county parties that's probably the most effective thing. The other thing is building the list of people who are eligible and willing to be central committee members. And that's a little bit stricter because you have to be in the right region um, mm -hmm. and you only get two per region. And you also have to have not voted for Republican or Democrat in the last primary. In the last primary. Because Ohio um, party affiliation is entirely based off of who you vote for in the most recent primary, because fuck Kasich. Um, so what was the last primary, 2020? Yep. Okay. But if someone, if someone uh, voted for a different party, so they can't make it in, we can, mm -hmm. and their seat's still open, we can potentially shoehorn them in right after the primary, just making sure they don't vote, and then we can just elect them to the open seat right afterwards. Got it. 
but it'll okay. be, but you can't kick someone out of a seat. You can only take an op- take a seat left open in that case. Okay. Who's on Twitter? Or any of you on Twitter? Caleb. Okay. So I need to be able to tag people when I recruit on Twitter so I can funnel you. I can funnel them to you. Caleb, so draw- you handling that? You need us to drop our handles yeah. in the chat. Yeah, just drop them in the chat. Yeah. And then I guess the other thing is that, especially because I was the only volunteer for a bit, we have not done a great job curating our uh, incoming list, which is pretty much entirely on me. And I am, I've been asking and hoping to get onto like one of Pennsylvania's calls or some of one of the other groups that are doing those Zoom onboardings, because I still don't entirely understand how they work. I will share my onboarding file with you okay. um, on Discord. So that you can see how I onboard people. And I have a process that, that goes very quickly. And Gary Alvstad in California automated it through Google Sheets. Ooh. So you are welcome to copy that. It sends out an auto email. Nice. And actually the thing I was debating a little bit doing is a couple people on this call I know haven't really gone through any onboarding stuff and haven't signed up to anything the Mises Caucus. Would you guys be willing to be test dummies for our onboarding process? Yeah, hey, let's look, do you're it. a state organizer. You've been going, you've gone through onboarding. <laughs> Don't raise your hand. <laughs> okay. So let's, yeah, let's work on that. Um, I will help you with that. I find that the quickest way to answer incomings is directly from my email. Well, I'll just run you through real quickly. So when people sign up and I get uh, in my inbox a notification, they mm-hmm. are receiving at the same time an auto reply it doesn't look like an auto reply it looks like an authentic you know like hey welcome email from the california mises caucus email account it goes out with a questionnaire that is tailored for the california delegation can you attend you know how did you hear about us these are important dates these are the people to contact and so on and so forth so there are two step ones That's step one. The simultaneous step one is that I respond personally for my email address to every single person who emails in California. And I get several every single day. And I say, hi, my name is Angela McArdle. Thanks for signing up. I'd love to connect more. Uh, What county are you in and how did you hear about us? They reply back. I copy some of the other state organizers. In California, we have over 285 uh, verified Mises Caucus members. So we have seven organizers for different areas and different sections. So depending on where they're at in California, I copy that organizer and I copy Matthew Butts, who personally picks up the phone and vets every single member so that we do not have trolls and so that I can check someone's uh, dedication level. You know, we kind of gauge that as well. Like someone's like, oh, I don't know if I can go to everything, but I want to donate. Great. You know, we still want to include them. And once that happens, then we plug them into the Discord and get them connected with, you know, other people. And I usually copy someone in their county so that they can figure out what's going on with the counties. Now, so that's how I get people in. Every three months, I go, well, really every month, I go through the list and check to see if there's anybody that I haven't heard from or interacted with in three months. And I send them an email to make sure that I am touching base with them or a Facebook message or whatever. But we got to get away from relying totally on Facebook because one of our organizers in California just really plugged into Facebook and never backed up his data. He just got zucked one day for absolutely no reason. Yep. He doesn't even get he doesn't even get like regular bands. It was just first time you're gone. So yeah, if he would a number of our organizers already been perma banned from Facebook. We do everything right. on Discord and then and Google Drive and then occasionally I back up to Google Drive locally. That is fantastic. Yep, that's pretty much what I do. Um, Twitter is a little less ban happy, you know, but it, it is what it is. I, I have all of that backed up as well to a nation builder account. So how do you manage to keep up with who you've contacted in the last three months? Because I can't keep up with who I contact in the last. Spreadsheet, three. spreadsheet, spreadsheet, notes, notes, notes. And you want to make your notes as short as possible so that you're not overwhelming yourself. Because the more time you spend typing in notes, the less time you have to spend doing other things that you would rather be doing, honestly. So, and and make sure that everybody has access to the same spreadsheet. When you have multiple people using different spreadsheets, that is a nightmare and will slow you down and waste a lot of time. 
the other thing that I think you should do is you should equip people who want to start county parties mm -hmm. with good stuff. I will send you my affiliate um, building guide so you can have that. It does not replace whatever you have in your county. It's complementary yeah. to it because I don't cover bylaws and treasury crap and all of that. It's a little bit more like the building the foundation of it to keep the to keep people interested in what they're doing, honestly. Yeah. We're not historically very purpose driven. Like we are ideologically, but when it comes down to building things at the county level, it's like, oh, here's bylaws and the paperwork and just do the thing. And you're like, what is that? And they're like, oh, do you know, to freedom. Yeah. They're like, through through bylaws, I don't understand. So um Thanks. like the things that so that's that's really how we build in california every time i have a meeting that i'm going to attend anything like that i just put on twitter like where are the libertarians in sacramento or wherever and i just immediately hit everybody up hey have you gotten in touch with the mises caucus organizer in your area have you and, and i don't bother i don't hate on other people but i don't bother recruiting any other way because i'm building the party that i want to build so if people are not into the Mises caucus, I'm like, that's cool. You know, here's a party join link, but I don't necessarily follow up with them. Yeah. I, you know, like I just want to build the culture and build people that I want to be surrounded by. And everyone else that we get, you know, like that's gravy, cool. I just treat them as sort of like my big tent periphery. Well, that mostly makes sense. And I got will say that is the one thing I've been Ohio's done well, I'm happy with, is that we have uh zoom meeting every month and then we've been having consistently in-person socials every month for months Great. now and now we're having three socials a month at least in person yeah that's awesome that's what we're doing in california so we usually have it we split everything into sections right because it's yep. so such a long state we got the north central and the south and we have uh, the north has a meetup once a month central has a, a meetup about once a month, sometimes it's every six weeks where they do it online. And then in the South, we kind of go back and forth from LA to Orange County and then San Diego as well. So we, we mix it up. Okay. And then I guess the other question I had is what do you do for onboarding organizers or kind of handling the training of that? Because I'm already wearing a lot of hats and the other organizers that I've onboarded, <laughs> I was onboarding them all by myself. And I don't think I did as good a job as I could have. Um, I think that talking with other organizers is really helpful. And I would recommend the Washington party. They are really solid. Uh, Anna and Elliot and Laney will really help you. And so will Funkhauser in Colorado. He is really good. So the, Elliot and Laney and Funkhauser are all very good at dealing with data and processes. And Funkhauser is also really good at Discord. He stresses that over and over again that you gotta you gotta build a community, and he he's done that really well for Colorado through Discord. California, we have our own Discord because it's so huge, you know, and we we have areas and sections, and it's like difficult to keep up with everything. So at a certain point, you may want to give that a try also. Um, onboarding, attend state organizer meetings that are once a month those are very helpful even if you can't do everyone personally just make sure there is an organizer on there i have an organizer chat we use you know like facebook but i do a lot of email threads and i just run everything by them okay. and we have a we have a policy that like if there's going to be any decision well in california we're also a state level pack so we're fundraising for political purposes we have bylaws we're registered with the secretary of state it's not a federal thing in California. We're just a state level pack. So we treat everything like it's a board decision. So we get a vote, you know, quick yes, no vote. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And it just helps when everybody knows what's going on. And also, like, don't be afraid to, like, dip out for a little bit if you need to. I'm, I'm always on. I'm never not doing this unless I'm sleeping and then I'm probably having a nightmare about it. But everyone else, I'm like, please like take a break and go have a drink or hang out with your family or your friends or whatever. So because because burnout is real, we do get we do get people burned out. Yeah, no, that's fair. Eh. 
I don't even know if it's burnout because they left too early to have been burned out. Right. <laughs> some right. of them. Okay. That, so you so you are doing a separate organizer only meeting once a month. Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. Very important. And sometimes it's it doesn't have to be a long meeting. It could be 20, 30 minutes, but we got to get on call and go over things. Um, and then I go over like who dropped off, who didn't, you know, occasionally we'll have people drop off or, or rage quit the caucus. And I'm like, what happened? And we do a postmortem. And um, I try not to spend too much time on that because I don't want us to develop a culture of shitting on and hating people who leave. Yeah. But we need to understand what's going on. So is it that somebody was too busy with family? Did they move out of state? Are they, you know, do they have a personal problem? We had one guy who had a legitimate mental breakdown, was really sucky, like yeah. schizophrenic episode where he had been totally, he was going to be a county chair, you know, for a newly formed county. And so we had to deal with that. Um, that sucked. It was weird. But keeping everyone in the loop, then we all knew how to like handle it when he was sending a bunch of like insane messages to everyone in the, you know, California Libertarian Party. So yeah, things, things like that, things like that. And then also we are really on top of the Mises Caucus narrative in California too. So we really manage the PR and the optics of everything. If there's any drama, we know what's going on and we talk about it so that we have like a unified message. Obviously we're not, we're not copy pasting everything so that it's verbatim but then you're not going to get any contradictions out of me and like Adrian Malagon, the other organizer. They're like, yeah. they're like my squad, you know, like I don't have girl squad. I have Mises caucus. Um, yeah. Also yeah. fair warning for those that haven't heard it. Um, if you want to avoid having problems with the Ohio libertarians, avoid every single group on Facebook that has the words libertarian and Ohio in them. This yeah. is, this sounds like a joke, but there is currently an ongoing like libel litigation suit because of stuff in there. And there are, they are entirely cesspools of people that have been around for a very long time and don't want to give up anything and are fighting to death for it. And there's nothing that good that comes out of them. Once in a while, a new person shows up and then like, if you could just catch the new people and then leave, but it's not worth it. Right. Same like for the Ohio. delegates groups, the national delegate groups. Absolute brain cancer. Yeah. Ohio actually is a pretty good, uh, if you want to be on something, be the rocket chat, which is Ohio. So Ohio, I will speak for the good things of us. Um, we have a bunch of really techie people. Like I think a maybe even a majority of the people at the state level are IT people of some form or the other. So we've had our, an internal Ohio CRM for years and everything. And we have our own privately developed app for like the Ohio messaging internally. So the rocket chat would be the thing to be on. It's broken out by counties um, and by chair positions and everything. So Very that nice. would be a good thing to be on. Um, yeah. Ohio does have some stuff working for us. And the other thing is that o the LP Ohio has been great on the vaccine stuff and the COVID stuff this whole time. That's really awesome. I think your your state's Twitter has been pretty good too. I don't know yes. who runs that. Uh, Jimmy is great. He was my secretary back when I was the all president. Very cool. So, yeah. So, so Ohio LP <laughs> has come a long way in the last year. It's really impressive. Yeah. And I'd like to take more credit for it, but it was, <laughs> it was uh, some other people doing a lot of hard work and us helping out, but mostly uh, surfing the wave. So but that's the great thing, though, is that we are now in a really good spot, but haven't made any enemies or drama along the way, except Chrissy, who already hated us. And she even is, I'd say this, she dislikes the Mises caucus generally, but loves me personally. So we yeah it's fine yeah i've never had a negative interaction with her although i do feel bad she randomly showed up to the la county convention really? and i didn't know she was coming and i was very busy running the whole thing and i don't think i even said hello to her like i just saw her and then i was like is that chris oh that doesn't make any sense you know in my head and then yeah. i just continued my stuff and then at the end of the day i was like 
I think that was her. That was weird. I should have said hello, but that's what happens when you're running events and, you know, running around trying to manage 70 people. Well, she was talking about the, uh, what was it, the Pennsylvania party convention that she was at and everyone was at except for me. Um, and she said people that she knew that were the, like there with her said they saw a MAGA shirt somewhere. It's like, I haven't seen any photos of it. You think there would have been one? And I haven't heard of anyone else, but like she says, people that she knew saw it and she trusts them. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, I saw um, Goody Proctor dancing the devil with the devil in the pale moonlight, you know? And then the, yeah. the, like, that's what level of hysterics this like MAGA shirt rumor is. Well, it's like, even if that was the thing, it wouldn't be that. Or And then there's some stuff about like the people saying comments that were like derogatory towards trans people, which honestly, like, I could never heard it. Happening. Yeah. yeah. I could never see heard that happening, it. but probably didn't happen. But yeah. Yeah. And That's... then of course there's the whole question of what do you consider derogatory in what context? Because I listen to Legion of Skanks. And a lot of that doesn't sound great out of context. Right. Yeah. That's people people want to believe that there are a bunch of clansmen bigots running around taking over the LP. They really like want it because they feel like they have, they, these people don't know what their purpose in life is. And they have like so little going for them that they think they'll be the heroes and throw out the clan. And, and so, you know, they have to scapegoat someone to make them the villain and the clan. And that's us, because then at the end of the day, they can pat themselves on their back and say, I did something worthwhile instead of realizing that their life is, is devoid of significant meaning and they're married to Netflix and their LP social club. Like that's really the reality. Yeah. And it's, just, it's hard to dislodge a preconception. But once again, yeah. Ohio had some of the really crazy people. Um, you did a year ago and well you uh you weren't in the ohio chat during the last national convention where here here's the really fun one they were saying um and this was i think the current chair of ohio at the time was saying um the mises caucus right now on the floor is trying like that original vote for like certified delegates yeah is trying to vote to decertify all online delegates so they can remove Joe Jorgensen from the ballot and put Jacob Hornberger on it. That's like so insane. Well, I, I sent them quotes. Like I sent them screenshots from our Discord of like, that's the opposite of what we're doing. Like here was the Mises caucus talking. I sent you the private secret thing of us saying, let's get this vote over with and get back to business. We're in favor of Joe Jorgensen because right that, well <laughs> jacob hornberg had already checked out like this yeah. is so wild is that's why like man like it really does try my patience to try to have to to not like rip them apart publicly i want to do it but i realize it's just not the most efficient way to spend my time yeah sometimes you gotta and then you gotta work these people too so you gotta take it gentle like i'm yeah. I'm, I'm very excited to see uh what's uh michael heiss on uh tim pool and he is maybe gonna do a bit of the yemen uh uyghur genocide uh following gong organ harvesting stuff he'd been listening to pete quinones a lot he said to prepare for that and then i talked to him because i'm a researcher for some stuff and he is ready but that's going to be great um i recommend that everybody super chat their join links oh, okay for people in ohio all the state organizers should be super chatting the join links don't the super chats just get buried now uh some of them do some of them don't give it a shot though because he does he only reads like the ones that are up to in the hundreds like if you if you only do like hundreds five. yeah because he he gets a lot of super chats yeah like his he gets super chats like most people get regular comments well blow yeah. up that chat as much as you can with your join link and and stuff about ohio lpmc because we need to make it easy for people to find us and um be ready that day too i'll be all you know like be ready yeah. i'll be all over social media trying to no that's the that's the first night of our conference and i'm and i'm hosting the hospitality room so oh that's right that's right you guys will be busy i'm gonna go pull out my buckets of booze 
I wish I could attend. I'm not sure if I'm going to get an opportunity to go to Ohio before the convention since you're having your convention afterwards. Um, don't, even in our convention, nothing important happens. Right, right. Like the, actually gets the, the important thing that may be happening is we may be rewriting some of the bylaws to make our system less screwy. Well, I mean, for me, it's like, it's about being able to meet Ohio delegates. That's really the That's most fair. important thing to me. Um, and I would love more opportunities. If there are XCOM meetings that the public can sit in on, I would love to sit in on one. Oh yeah, I, all of ours are uh, posted to YouTube. Okay, yeah, because I don't need to like say anything. I just want to watch and yep. you know engage, inter, you know, not interact with people, I guess, see how people interact with each other. Does anyone have any more questions for me? Yeah, so I want to open the floor. Anyone else that wants to talk to Angela, she's stuck here. I'm actually going to go to another speaking engagement after this, but I still have a little bit of time. Yeah, she's stuck here for 10 minutes. What did you always want to say? Hi, Angela. Nate. Hello. Um, hey, I just wanted to say uh, great job on that uh, in that debate on Lions of Liberty. That was a lot of fun to listen to. And uh, that was, yeah, like I said on Twitter, that was a heck of an opening statement. Uh, you were a great ambassador for us. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Definitely second that. Like I said earlier, really enjoyed that conversation between you and Matt. Thanks. I wanted to have a whole nother second one about Christianity and individualism. So I'm going to push for that. I think that would be really fun. I would like to do a deep dive on that. Mm hmm because obviously the, the LP, as we all know, has historically been very unwelcoming to Christians, especially in the past few years. Can we, I'm just think, dropping in the chat real fast. This link is to the uh, Ohio Libertarian Party YouTube channel. So they okay. post all their XCOM meetings, all their central committee meetings. Well, I thought they post all the central committee meetings. So they're actually missing the last one still. And that one was... The one where I, where I and the others got elected. It was also a little bit of a shit show because yeah. a woman spent 30, 40 minutes after it screaming about the lawsuits over what one person said over. So oh, said over. That was a good time. Every state party has it. So don't feel too discouraged. Every state party has the mortifyingly embarrassing retard drama. Well, well, and the, that's, the, that's yours. The impressive thing was that they actually kept the quorum through the meeting and then when the meeting ended and the recording turned off she yeah, was screaming i hope you have lots of equity in your house i'm going to sue it and <laughs> take it all i'm going to sue you until you have to put your children out in the street with prostitution facebook groups it's so great yeah and it was facebook literally groups. over her liking a facebook comment I... that the facebook comment was the one that like accused him of some like sexual harassment and the but the, chrissy was the one to accuse him all this like i'm not going to go into yeah, that much yeah but then no. Chrissy's like, okay, I am leaving the committee and removing self, myself from the drama. And some of the people left in the committee had liked her comment. And that was it. That was what the whole right. <laughs> over. It's just, they, these, wow. We need to ship these people to Somalia and let them, you know, build back better over there, I guess. That's well, they're just getting bombed by us if they move to Somalia. So well, you know. We're six. I know. Taxpayer dollars at work. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I am going to depart from you all. You're all very wonderful. Thank you so much for inviting me on. Um, Happy to have you. I would love to chat with more people. So maybe in a few months, you know, let's do it again. And, and I can give you guys some updates on what's happening in California. For sure. Keep fine. Thanks for dropping in, Angela. All right. You are very welcome. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Bye, Stacey and Pete.